looked at the functions of health communication, how uh, it impacts in information, how it provides uh, people with scientific knowledge, but also uh, that it should be very accessible to people so that they can eliminate a certain myth in the society. Another function was education, and uh, we later uh, dive deep into health education uh, as an aspect that uh, entails health communication. And uh, we looked at the motivation aspect of health communication, but also how it helps in persuasion of individuals uh, to adopt uh, better uh, health care behaviors. We looked at communication as a counseling, uh, having a counseling uh, function, and uh, how it uh, mainly relies on how some of the communication skills of the uh, client, or I mean the service provider, uh, and we're able to state that as an individual, you must be having uh, those counseling and communication skills if you're to offer counseling services or in your communication, you if you're to offer counseling. And we looked at how uh, health communication also impacts on health development and uh, organization. Uh, we then looked at uh, health education and we then looked at health education here and uh, I don't know if those slides have changed if not uh, let me just change them here we then looked at uh, health education having earlier looked at uh, it in health in health communication we then were able to dissect its definitions uh, its scope uh, its historic perspective, how uh, health education uh, came to be. And we were able to realize that initially it was the herbal and uh, uh, traditional healers that uh, actually uh, were used as a module to, to develop the aspect of health education because they were able to offer community information that then the community used uh, to improve their health seeking behaviors. And we realized that later in the 1970s, uh, this aspect of health education was later expanded into the medicine world. And, uh, the role of health education, we were able to look at it, the different ways of how it prevents infectious diseases, but also mainly uh, at, uh, at the end, we were able to discuss uh, how to implement and I evaluate health uh, education programs. And one of them was that uh, we were looking at needs assessment and program planning, how you have to go into the community and uh, you should be able to uh, identify, uh, most times through research, how a particular communities behave, but also uh, what the community takes as a priority in terms of uh, the health services or the needs that they may want or they may need. We looked at uh, that you should set an objective or you should set goals that must be clear and uh, they must be smart in that uh, they must be specific, measurable, achieve, achievable, rele relevant and time-bound. Uh, we looked at uh, designing materials that goes hand in hand with uh, choosing an effective communication channel. And we were able to look at the different ways of uh, uh, choosing an effective channel and what to consider. Uh, you must be able to consider uh, the age uh, of your audience, the type uh, of your audience, if they are youth or if they are young people, uh, you would prefer we have to use uh, social media or electronic media to disseminate your information. However, uh, if they are elderly, you would need to use uh, uh, print media because we know that uh, in our communities, it is mostly our parents that uh, 
our, our elder parents that are well versed with print media and for them they will struggle to then adjust to to uh, electronic media then uh, we we looked at engaging the stakeholders and uh, we looked at the co different communication theories and uh, then we asked that uh, we would further go ahead to discuss our communication theories uh, as the module continues and we will be able to understand uh, how you can have a client uh, provider kind of interaction but also uh, the different theories uh, that can impact how we communicate information to the different uh, to the different clients that we have in our, in our service in our service uh, provision area uh, I think we were able to look at a few uh, strategies that we could use in trying to have better communication skill and we discussed health and literacy uh, meaning that someone has ability to discuss or has ability to understand specific uh, health aspects but also we talked about uh, the cultural bit of it that as an individual you must be able to have a uh, an understanding of uh, that particular community, especially their culture. However, what is again good to, important to remind us about is that uh, when we are discussing culture, we are virtually looking at a group of individuals uh, with common characteristics and uh, uh, common possible traits. So we may not have to uh, most times depend on uh, what we call uh, what we call traditional groups uh, we may have to we may have to look at uh, clients in terms of the common characteristics and we're able to give you examples that there are people who may be uh, practicing uh, homosexuality and in, in that in that regard they might be having common uh, a, a common way of living and then uh, if you uh, implementing a health communication activity it is very important that you take them as they are similarly adolescents are also a specific culture because uh, they all uh, adhere or have a certain common kind of behavior that is in there I think uh, that is that that we discussed. So today, uh, just a minute, as this loads. So let me kindly share with us uh, what we intend to, to cover today. And uh, so today uh, we intend to cover uh, what we call strategies for promoting uh, health and preventing disease. So you realize that uh, in, in, our sub, in our subsequent talks, we have mainly been uh, discussing uh, communication and health education as major strategies uh, that can help us uh, do what we call preventive measures. However, today deeper, we want to uh, dive into uh, other key strategies that can help us to promote health and prevent disease. So, uh, one of the key strategies we need is uh, healthy eating. We need to encourage individuals and communities uh, to eat a, a balanced diet. And uh, we very well know from our past uh, discussions that uh, 
mostly in the sub-Saharan Africa, the burden of disease has uh, constantly uh, changed from uh, uh, non-communicable diseases to now chronic illnesses. Whereas the, 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 whereas the non-communicable diseases uh, could still be there or are still there, Africa now suffers a double disease burden where you must handle non-communicable and uh, the chronic illnesses. So what strategy do we need to develop as, a, as, as, as scholars of, of, of health promotion? We need to understand that if we can encourage individuals to have a, a balanced diet, you need to do a whole grain, uh, you need to eat, eat some lean proteins, then uh, you would be able to reduce the number of uh, chronic illnesses. Secondly, we need to uh, do physical activity. So when you're designing a health promoting uh, strategy, these are some of the issues you must be able to discuss with your community. For example, if you understand the demographics of your community as a predominantly uh, urban area, then it is upon you to discuss and identify that because this community is particularly urban dwellers, they might be eating fast foods and or they, they might be eating food that uh, they might be eating food that may be of less nutritious value. And therefore, we realize that uh, from the industrialization of uh, Europe, but also of Africa, that most of the chronic illnesses are arising from urban areas. Why? Because of the type of feeding that uh, they are in. But also, we have realized a few cases that are predominantly in the rural area. And most times they have been associated to eating of industrialized sugars. So most times it is the rich families in the village. They, they, they may be in the rural area, but they may be from a rich or uh, a highly uh, a, a, a family or household that has high income levels. So it is upon you to design uh, uh, information or a strategy according to, to, to the type of demographics that particular society you're intervening in uh, behaves. Similarly, in the physical activity, you should be able to design uh, it as a strategy where, where you, 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 you realize that uh, uh, this society, for example, uh, could be the one that has a, a lot of uh, still the chronic illnesses because people are very inactive you may find even uh, if you were to rank it by age that communities that uh, have younger people are also getting chronic illnesses so you would need to design uh, the information on physical activity as an important strategy if you were to help these young men uh, to get out of that another strategy should be stress management uh, you need to encourage as a strategy to promote healthy living uh, individuals and communities to practice stress management techniques such as mindfulness, meditation and relaxation. This can help improve mental and reduce the risk of chronic illnesses. We've realized that uh, uh, there are a lot of people that, that uh, get stroke, uh, that get other uh, illnesses possibly uh, because they, they, they do not, uh, they, they, their mental health is not put into account. So when you're designing such messages, we understand that there are some key populations. For example, persons living with HIV, we have issues of uh, trauma where uh, people have experienced uh, gender-based violence, or they have experienced uh, some sexual uh, assaults that have occurred. So it is upon you uh, to design a message appropriate so that they can be able to uh, manage. So sometimes uh, in stress management, you offer these people counseling services and uh, they will be able to, to, 
to recover, but also they can be able to uh, understand that uh, this happens. So there are various ways of stress management uh, that you may need to develop. And it is upon you in the field to be able to be innovative, to be able to be creative. You need to understand uh, what, is the, what is the level of uh, mental health of, 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 of people who are HIV positive. Another issue would be uh, people that uh, families that are child headed. So you, if you have a community that has more child heads uh, or has a, a, a very high number of child headed families, then uh, it is where you need to put emphasis as such. Uh, another issue is immunization. This is another uh, strategy uh, that has actually largely worked uh, in the medicine world, encouraging individuals to receive recommended vaccines. Uh, the reason why that uh, there are still some of the infectious diseases in some parts of the of Africa, but also mostly in, in sub-Saharan Africa, is that many people, based on their uh, individual, uh, religious, uh, traditional, and some, sometimes uh, uh, larger influences, they do not want to take uh, such kind of vaccination. We've seen it with COVID-19, we've seen it, we've seen it with the Ebola vaccine, We've seen it with very many other vaccines, even including polio. You realize there are societies where uh, the religious beliefs or the traditional belief is that uh, you're not supposed to take such, such kind of uh, vaccination. So it makes it hard. That is why uh, you need data, you need information. What percentage of this population has been vaccinated? Which, how much, uh, what is their religious belief? What is their traditional belief? So if you realize that they have myth and a lot of misconceptions about these kinds of immunization, then it is very important that you design a, a certain type of immunization information to allow them. So cancer screening has been another strategy. Uh, people have been encouraged to receive uh, these cancer screening, such as uh, mammograms and colonoscopes, uh, so they can help uh, they, they can help uh, detect cancer early, especially the colon cancer and uh, uh, cancer of the breast. People have been the ladies have been co continuously asked to do breast examination, and uh, so that they can do early detection and uh, they can be treated. Uh, successfully. So, last another strategy that is here is tobacco, tobacco sensation, uh, encouraging in, individuals to quit smoking or using other tobacco products and help reduce the risk of chronic diseases such as heart disease, cancer, and lung disease. Now, you realize that uh, the issue of tobacco is not actually a very small issue worldwide. And uh, uh, recent research has shown that uh, actually uh, there are more people who are being affected because of passive smoking uh, than actually uh, these uh, other people who, who do active smoking. Why? Because uh, their body tries uh, to, fast, to, to fight it at, at an early stage, but then uh, because the person is active, uh, the body then uh, decides to, to, to take this as part of its, uh, its, its routine and uh, tries not to, to, to fight it as much as it would fight the, 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 the smoke for, for an individual that is, is passive. And in that, in, that, uh, in, in, in that way, people who are passive actually virtually develop more uh, heart issues and uh, liver lung issues because of this so in the, in your community you need to identify uh, what is the type of uh, or what is the way in which the community perceives tobacco 
how regular does the community rise up against uh, people who openly do the smoking? Because if you're exposed to that uh, type of, of smoke, because one tobacco cigarette just like this carries over 2,000 plus chemicals, among which uh, include chemicals that uh, increase people's dopamine, that are addictive. So sometimes you, you, you may be exposed to a very ill health, not because you were meant to be, but uh, because you have actually been exposed to substances that your body is not supposed to expo be uh, <coughs> exposed to. And most times, the, the, many countries face issues when it comes to regulating tobacco issues. And so it is upon you in your health preventive measure to try so much to uh, give people information about the dangers of smoking, but also not only smoking, but uh, exposing other people to smoke. And uh, we want to look at public policy and health promotion. We want to look at how uh, uh, the public policies have uh, helped to promote uh, health from uh, healthy living. And when we're talking about public policy, we're looking at uh, laws or we're looking at rules and uh, regulations that have been formed, uh, that have been formed to guide uh, people to live a certain lifestyle. And like we, we discussed earlier, uh, these are very important if we want to achieve a certain type of quality of life of the people. So the first one is the, the smoke-free laws. You, if implementing, implementing smoke-free laws in public places and workplaces can help reduce exposure to secondhand smoke and encourage tobacco sensation. So many policies uh, have actually been formed that uh, uh, smoking should be away from the public places. I always tell people about an experience where uh, a policeman uh, was actually smoking near me, and uh, but he's holding a gun. So you, in, in such a circumstance, you, you're a little skeptical to fight for your own right. So you already know that the, the man is smoking and you're, you're, you're not comfortable, but uh, unfortunately, uh, you also worried for your life that if you told this man to to, to go away, uh, he may actually decide to threaten you. So it is upon public policy again to to put their penal codes for individuals that uh, do uh, sometimes break such laws. So uh, another policy that uh, virtually improves a uh, health of individuals or healthy living is uh, implementing policies that promote healthy food options in schools. So we are advocating that uh, uh, governments need to uh, develop policy that uh, promote healthy food options in schools. Actually in Uganda, uh, the president had uh, advocated that uh, all primary schools, all primary all all, prime, all schools in the lower level should, should, should start preparing porridge for, for their students. So that is just an example of uh, some of the policies. However, there are policies that actually encourage that uh, uh, students must be fed on, on a certain type of meal uh, when they are at school. But not only students, also people are at workplaces, and at work and, and at public places. And uh, you realize that uh, what we grapple with in many of the African cities is the issue of uh, street vending. Now, street vending means the individuals put food, uh, food sometimes that is uncovered, uh, food that is uncovered on the roads, and uh, you may not be able to trust the source of the way the, the food was cooked, but also you may struggle to trace uh, uh, what, what, what health uh, 
uh, strategies is the person who is vending this food putting up. And uh, those are some of the policies government can actually put across to try and improve health. That uh, there should be no food vending, all food should be packaged, like all those or packaged or covered. And uh, you must, as, as a food selling restaurant, you must have a, a, a trash bin. All these uh, need to be put into account as part of the policy in promoting uh, the health of the society. Self streets and bike paths are uh, implementing these policies uh, that promote safe streets and bike can help uh, encourage physical activity and reduce the risk of injuries. We know that uh, very many societies suffer injuries and most times motorbike, but also bicycle injuries. And therefore it is better to create a bicycle, I mean a, a motor, motorbike free zones where you encourage that uh, uh, this area should be a border border free zone so that pedestrians are safer, but also people who are riding on bicycles are safer. So what are some of the considerations uh, for implementation of uh, these uh, health promoting and uh, disease prevention strategies? So effective health promotion and disease prevention strategies require uh, understanding of the target audience and their needs and preferences. So you realize that these uh, uh, considerations are similar to the co uh, to the to the to the considerations one in health communication, but also uh, in health education. So they may be similar uh, in, in 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 trying to uh, to implement. So when you're trying to implement, these may be uh, similar strategies or considerations. So while we're saying that uh, you need to understand your target audience and their needs, which we talked about, they should also be culturally appropriate and consider social and environmental factors that may influence health behaviors. Earlier on, I already discussed that uh, you need to understand uh, the, the, the type of, of society that you're dealing with. What are their norms? What are their customs? What are their beliefs? But also, what are the roles that uh, each person, what are the societal roles that uh, this community holds? But what are their values? So then you can be able to design an effective strategy uh, to implement this disease prevention strategy. You should be able to have a public-private partnership. This can be effective in promoting health and preventing disease as they bring uh, together a range of stakeholders with diverse perspectives and resources. Now, this was a, one of the uh, uh, hardest uh, issues that hit uh, very many health systems uh, during the outbreak of, of COVID-19. People were moving to health facilities that were private uh, they were making contacts with the with the private uh, private clinics, private hospitals, which did not have testing kits for COVID. Now, you realize that many of these these uh, private pa uh, partners or private service providers actually fell sick, and uh, one of the reasons why the COVID nineteen escalated why they were not able to trace some of the cases was virtually because of this uh, low public-private partnership in many of the health facilities or in many of the health systems. So you would realize that testing and follow-ups were only being done in government facilities. So if you're doing, uh, if you're considering to implement uh, a disease prevention strategy, it is very important that you, you, you involve private facilities. You make a private, uh, a public-private uh, partnership. So what happens is that you allow them to report to you, but also you can offer them uh, some of the uh, logistics or some of the essential supplies they can use. So for example, you can accredit them to do COVID-19 tests. 
and be able to offer them the test kits. And then you would make sure that they do not charge people for such tests. So in that case, you would be able to capture and also in other words, you will be able to surveil uh, the kind of diseases that are out there. So in many cases, many of the people uh, go to private health facilities and when they, they, they are diagnosed, because they are not reporting as private facilities, you realize it is very hard uh, to, to realize an outbreak. And that is why uh, many countries have sometimes struggled with uh, trying to uh, notify Ebola vaccination, I mean Ebola outbreaks, because then these contacts are made at a, at a private facility, which does not do monitoring, surveillance, and uh, reporting. Finally, uh, monitoring and evaluating health promotion and disease prevention strategies is critical to ensure their effectiveness and identify opportunities for improvement. And schools, schools provide an important setting for health promotion as they reach large numbers of children and adolescents who are at a critical stage of development. So in, in, in monitoring, in, in, in layman's language, it, is, it means having your eyes on. In other words, you routinely or you regularly uh, you're able to, to, to watch uh, the, the continuous strategies that you are, impl you are implementing. And then you can be able to identify, is it effective? Is it, is it not effective? So monitoring and evaluation is very, a very important aspect that many people ignore in their organizational uh, backgrounds, but you realize that uh, most times the projects go astray. So it is always very key that you put impact, or uh, you put effort, emphasis on M and E. In this monitoring and evaluation, you're able to realize what has worked and what has not worked. If you're doing, a, if you're giving uh, a community a information on how to use condoms, and you are able to leave condoms, uh, or you were able to leave the condoms with the LC maybe as a strategy so that anyone who uses it, who wants to, to have access to them, can go to the LC and pick for themselves. And at the end of the month, you realize that no one has picked. Then it is only through monitoring and continuous evaluation that you realize, eh, we did it wrong to give it to the LC. Rather, we would have put these things in the village corner or would have put them near the bush where no one is seeing and then these young boys can uh, actually come and pick them up. So in other words, they're saying you will have to identify different opportunities and we're looking at opportunities such as schools uh, which may have a large number of children and adolescents so then you can be able to uh, spread your message to offer your message to an audience that uh, is, uh, is big. So health promotion efforts in schools may include initiatives to promote health eating and physical activity, prevent tobacco, alcohol, drug use, and address mental health and emotional well-being. So the advantage of always targeting schools, and I think uh, which aspect has come here in this lecture, is that uh, you will need to start focusing in one, uh, schools. But also, uh, you may not need to focus in schools if, you, if, if you, you went to do your background check and realized in this society, majority of the people are out of school. You may realize there are societies that uh, have majority of their children who are out of school. And uh, if you targeted uh, those in school, you will virtually realize that uh, you have targeted uh, people in different community areas rather than the intended audience that you wanted. So the emphasis there is that uh, you need to be data guided. You need to have data that uh, is guided. So schools can also provide opportunities for health education 
and skill building as well as policy and uh, environmental changes to support healthy behavior. So you realize that uh, uh, because the schools are a learning center, but also uh, you're targeting children who are at their formative years, meaning that uh, at an early age, uh, if you imparted these people with knowledge uh, and you imparted them with healthy living behaviors, the fact that uh, as they continue to grow, that they will live better healthy lives, but also they can impact uh, their fellow peers that are out of school is very vivid and it is it it can it can happen so that is why uh, it would be critical that you target uh, this uh, type of institution healthcare facilities uh, another uh, consideration uh, that you can target uh, as a way uh, of trying to uh, give your message and uh, you can look at healthcare facilities because they provide a unique opportunity to promote health. So these are actually places or areas that are very important if you are to, to make your health prevention message uh, sent. And uh, because these health facilities are actually the ones that offer people uh, therapeutic but also preventive measures. Uh, the setting may include initiatives to increase patient access uh, to preventive care and health education, as well as intervention to promote healthy behaviors. But we already know that uh, in many health facilities, this is done. However, you need you need to, as a strategy, you will need to uh, at this point you will need to integrate uh, private health cares also. Because then uh, you realize that whereas these mothers go for antenatal care and they are offered uh, uh, health education and uh, they are given information, there are some mothers in there that uh, have never gone for, for, for antenatal care. So most times their uh, point of entry is OPD. And for them, they just stick to OPD and uh, at OPD, sometimes they may not be offered the health education. So it is clear that you must target uh, health facilities and offer them uh, the, 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 the preventive uh, strategy in order to reduce uh, the levels of morbidity in your society. Uh, you also need to target workplaces. Workplaces can play an important role in promoting health and well-being among employees. Health promotion programs in the workplace may include initiatives to encourage physical activity, healthy eating, and uh, stress management, as well as policies and programs to support tobacco sensation, alcohol, and drug prevention. So most times uh, what uh, uh, governments have done is uh, instead of uh, putting uh, workplaces under uh, health education issues, they have gone ahead to make policy uh, for human resource uh, and they are monitored against such uh, indicators, whether uh, how regularly uh, the staff are given uh, opportunity to engage in physical activity. For example, a get together, uh, stress relieving activity, get together where uh, clients go I mean where uh, these workers uh, or your employees go uh, and uh, spend some time doing some physical activities many of the organizations uh, including WHO and UNHCR have embedded this aspect into their into their uh, human resource policy and you realize in, in most of their settings they can construct volleyball courts, basketball courts. So this is all uh, as a way of, as a strategy of promoting uh, healthy behaviors and uh, preventing disease. Uh, as that. So work health, workplace health promotion can lead to improved productivity, decrease the healthcare costs and increase the employee satisfaction. 
So if you're able to offer your employees uh, all this information, health promotion information, uh, they may uh, become more productive. Why? Because uh, they are uh, preventing diseases. But also uh, because many of the organizations put uh, their employees on, 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 on insurance, then your healthcare costs will drastically reduce because then a uh, few of your staff are uh, falling ill or have uh, uh, diseases. And then definitely to lead to increased satisfaction from the employee because then uh, you're able to offer them uh, a healthy preventing uh, workplace. So you also need to consider the communities if you are to tackle uh, or address these issues of uh, uh, health uh, preventing uh, diseases and uh, healthy behavior. Communities are an important setting for, for healthy promotion uh, as they provide a context where people live, work and play. So health promotion efforts in communities may include initiatives to increase access to food, uh, initiatives to increase access to antenatal care, increase, uh, uh, initiatives to increase access to, to HIV testing, to, to maternal, to institutional de deliveries, to a balanced uh, diet, uh, to maternal breastfeeding, as well as interventions to address social determinants of health, such as poverty, housing, and education. So, you, like we have always st stated that you must understand the problem of the community. The need of the community is the most important thing that you should understand. And if you're able to understand it, then uh, you will be able to understand which kind of intervention uh, you can actually make. So community-based health promotion uh, may involve partnerships with local organizations and community members to address specific health issues. So you may not necessarily need to, to go there as an individual, but it is very key that when you're dealing with the community, but also uh, as you're dealing not only with the community, but also if you're dealing with schools, if you're dealing with uh, workplaces, you must always follow uh, a certain hierarchy uh, in that regard, because then uh, you may be floating uh, protocols that may cost uh, your health education uh, program. So you have to involve the local organizations, you need to involve the community members and all that. The, the community members, they are sometimes what they call opinion leaders. All these, uh, you need to involve them uh, as you implement that process. Online and digital settings. Online and digital settings such as social media, mobile health applications and uh, telehealth services provide new opportunity for health promotion and behavior change. And uh, like I said earlier, uh, you have to uh, understand the kind of target group if you're using this channel of communication of online and digital settings. But however, uh, you also realize that uh, there are other uh, online ways that may not necessarily be social media. So you may realize there are TVs, and uh, you may be able to understand that possibly a majority of your population has a television cast. But if you went to a society uh, or in your community there and they don't have uh, uh, televisions, and then you tell them that uh, the announcement was made on the TV, then uh, you, 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 you may get rejections from the community. So you need to understand the common uh, media of communication in that community. It may be a radio station, a local radio station. So it will be upon you uh, to design your your health inf uh, uh, healthy promotion information, and uh, you go and present in a radio station. They may be using uh, Kings, or they may be having uh, LC ones they listen to as their mode of communication. Or their mode of communication might be uh, religious leaders, so you will have to choose uh, appropriately. 
So uh, these technologies can provide personalized health information, support and feedback, as well as real-time monitoring of health behaviors and outcomes. However, there are also challenges and ethical considerations associated with digital health promotion, such as privacy and security concerns. So we have realized that, that of recent that uh, these digital health promotions have been digital, uh, okay, they have become software and uh, most times you realize people have applications for fasting, people have uh, online doctors and so forth and people have uh, online measurement of blood pressure, all these, these are all uh, online platforms, but you may realize that uh, the challenge is that uh, these things may not be effective, but also the privacy and security concerns of using these digital uh, divides may, may, may become a problem. So whereas, whereas they have advantages, you also keenly uh, need to, to look at uh, uh, the different uh, disadvantages that they may hold. So that is uh, that. And uh, I wanted us to end maybe we just rush through very fast with uh, uh, because we're left with roughly 10 minutes, uh, we'll would go through uh, the needs assessment because we have been going through uh, that you need to first do a needs assessment if you to do 